Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Wednesday, September 18, 2019. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What you're also looking at is an incorrect chart of the SPY. I don't know why the trading platform is serving up this look, but the candle that you see on the screen, which appears to have closed at 299.25, isn't actually the case. That wasn't the closing print of the day. I don't know what's going on, so what we'll do is look at a different chart and go for from there we can always switch over to the S&P cash index and now you get a different look now we can discuss the market we all know what today was today was kabuki theater day so leading up to today the market gets quiet everybody's quote unquote or i should say air quotes waiting on the fed and then the fed comes out with their announcement and then they have the press conference the market whips around, picks a direction, and goes. It's the same routine every single time. The problem is you don't know what the direction is ahead of time, so you have to wait. Let it pick a direction, and generally it goes from there. But here's the secondary problem. Tomorrow could be, wait a minute, it's the reverse. We didn't really think they meant that. We now think they mean this. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that does happen a portion of the time. Can we hang our hat on anything like that? Absolutely not. I'm just bringing it up. It's an oh, by the way, just in caser. But what we're going to do is we're going to pick apart the charts. We're going to pick apart several charts because I think we can get a glimpse of where we are, what the important support zone is, what the important resistance area is, where another leg of buying would show up, and where another leg of selling would show up. So those are the important things. We're going to go through all that stuff, and of course, a whole lot more. We're going to do it all right here, right now. Before we do that, we're going to take a detour up front tonight. We're going to take a look at inside the numbers. There's a method to the madness. It's twofold. You need to see the schematic for the day. In addition, I want to show a snapshot of stocks on the move, getting a lot of questions. What's in it? What's in it? What's in it? So let me just answer it all in one shot. Right off the bat, we'll talk about the pre-market morning notes. Very simple stuff. We know about the Fed. We're prepared for the Fed. We know it's in the afternoon. We know not a lot's going to go on. It's unlikely a ton of trading is going on before the Fed. Maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower, but the real selling or the real buying is going to show up after 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But what we do have is a big fat round number of 3,000 on the ES contract or 300 in the SPY contract. What we're really talking about is if the market were to stay below 3,000, it's likely to trade lower. Some sellers will show up. Basically, the bears have the ball. Above 3,000 or 300 in the SPY, it's likely they chop around, float around. It becomes a chop shop. Where was the top of the chop? Well, let's go take a look. If we go higher and you see the updates begin to show up, 940, all of a sudden there's a little selling. We begin discussing the fat round number or psychological number of 3,000. It's a battle in the early going. Already we're focused on staying above 3,000, and this is important because it comes into play later on. Staying above will allow the bulls to try for the same gap area from yesterday around 3010. Doesn't have to happen right away, but if they begin to grind, that's where they would be trying to go. By 1030 up at the top, the bulls kept the market over the 3,300 prices. It's very quiet. So we saw a little bit of selling, a little bit of a bounce back, very quiet, pretty much expected normal garden variety kabuki theater day stuff. I'm already providing fair warning if it's just going to be a chop shop, don't expect a lot of updates rolling in. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to see here until there is. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Again, there's always a method to the madness. 1140. By the way, it's still a bear flag pattern until it's not. It will either complete to the south side or it will release the same energy in the northern direction, which would put the market back at the highs. It's interesting. When we get back to the charts, we'll see what they look like. The announcement comes, 
to 10 so far chop shop and that's normal garden variety two o'clock behavior on fed day there will now be a press conference at some point in the near term so what i'm doing is i'm also giving fair warning that the market may quiet down and then it may heat up again when the press conference starts 235 up at the top of note the bear flag pattern did what it was supposed to do the question now is lower or is that it for now again the spark will be kabuki theater press conference and important numbers will still be important that gap up north would still be important if we get panic buying above that more buying below the fat round number of 3300 the bears have the ball this is the schematic that we had this is the schematic that stayed whole and this is the schematic that actually played out how about stocks on the move we're going to look at the good the bad and the ugly we'll take a look at the charts real quick of the three stocks that hit their price objectives fedex acad and roku roku and boy did fedex and roku absolutely get smoked i mean they went right past the woodshed right into the inferno we had a possible morning gap trade on the board gis it didn't hit its target it's off the board then we also have a list of important numbers the s p e mini contract that's the es contract the spy which is the translation over to the etf and then crude oil numbers you can take a snapshot see if those numbers made any sense we're going to be on the charts but some of those numbers were spot on take note of the 2980 or 298 price by the way one more thing before we get back to the charts check out the bottom of the pre-market morning notes of note fdx or fedex is hanging around the first price target in the pre-market it has bounced off a few times already this target becomes a higher risk as a result might as well stay on the topic of fedex so the first price target was 153.18 the stock opened pretty much on that price target and traded immediately lower so we were pretty much flagging that thing about 10 minutes or so before the opening bell but the second zone while it didn't turn out to be a great trade by any means the second zone is where the stock found support for the day there has to be something to be said for that we're talking about a stock like fedex which isn't necessarily a 10 12 13 percent movable stock in any given day well it moved 13 percent today maybe a little bit more whatever it was at the lows that's a tremendous move for fedex down 22 dollars and we picked off the low and you might want to say well it's easy to say 150 dollars but that's not what it was it just conveniently was around 150 slightly below but that's not really what it is you've seen us do this before where else have we done it before how about acad acad forty dollars and sixty cents you see what happened late in the day it went all the way up to 42.58 or whatever the actual number was why did it happen this way this one was right out of the course no questions asked not focusing on the actual number 4060 to the penny but the reason that this found support where it did is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt right out of the course what's the course you ask lazy e-mini trader that's the course so by the way what are we doing here we're teaching the foundation we're giving continuing education every single day and then we're providing the schematic each and every day including stocks on the move gap trades and a schematic of what the market's doing as it's doing it as the day goes on it's the three pillars of success roku got smoked absolutely hammered taken out behind the woodshed past the woodshed lit on fire and it's not just today look where this thing was just a couple of weeks ago it made a high above 175 dollars here we are at a buck 30. so this was on the list at 138.21 what happened at 138.21 or slightly below you got a pretty nice rally for about two and a half bucks in just a matter of minutes now certainly when you get a rally of two two and a half bucks we're taking profit off the table i didn't get all two and a half bucks but i got a buck 80 of it and slightly less on another portion of the trade that's something i teach in the course at lazy e-mini trader how to turn some of these trades into risk-free emotionless trades here's a case in point 
The stock has a nice rally off the target buy price. You have to be trained to take some profit and not let what's remaining in your account, the remainder of the position, not let it go negative on you. The worst case scenario is you got a profit on some of the original position. Some of these end up being all day runners. Roku happened to be an all day runner in the southern direction. Let's get back to the S&P 500. We're back to an hourly chart of the spider. We want to look at what's obvious on the screen. What have we been discussing of late? We've been discussing the fact that we had a bear flag pattern. Here's a move down. Here is the flag portion of the bear flag pattern. And what do you know? Something else right out of the course at Lazy E-Mini Trader. Look where the low is and look where the high is up here. Now, it's debatable. This isn't necessarily to the penny, but this is market symmetry at work. Let me clean up the chart and do it a different way just to get the point across. In the middle, we have this long consolidation or flag of the bear flag pattern. Now, we came from a high up around here. We're using around. We're using it loosely because we don't necessarily make a trade based on this. We make trades based on very specific things that are taught in the course. But we use items like market symmetry or what's called measured moves as a guideline to confirm what we likely already know to be, for example, support or resistance. So when the market comes down to a low here, doesn't the lower leg in the southern direction look approximately the same as the one in the northern direction? The flag in the middle is essentially your midpoint. Well, then the next question is, well, what caused the market to reverse? Why did the market reverse? Well, obviously, everybody's going to hang their hat on something the Fed said or whatever the reaction was to whatever the Fed said or whatever the interpretation of what the Fed said or some derivative thereof. Obviously, that's why we're calling it Kabuki Theater. Forget the Fed. Let's put it in the rearview mirror. Just look at the chart and what's the chart telling us? Well, the 60-minute chart or the hourly chart, we got our information from, but what else do we have? Can we look at another chart and get another piece of information to support a case one way or the other? What happens when we look at the 120-minute chart? We begin to see, or at least I begin to see, where a breakout occurred. And what we do know is that markets like to come back and test former breakout and former breakdown areas. Where is that breakout area? If the market ran up to this high here, doesn't that make it important? So if that's important, we're going to call this a breakout area. So the market ran up, came back one time to test the former breakout area, came back again, and went lower. Well, as it's going lower, you think the breakout area is failing. It's not holding. So what would hold the market below the breakout area? What would hold the market essentially below that line? Or when I say hold, what would hold the market above or make it come back to or snap back above that line? Is there something else on this chart? I don't see anything else on this chart. So I want to look at another chart. It's like climbing a flight of stairs. You take one step at a time, one chart at a time, one time frame at a time. There are time frames in between these. These are the ones I use. Other people use other time frames. I use other ones from time to time. But these are the main ones. The ones that I show you on a repeated basis are the main time frames that I use. In addition to one other one that I discuss in the course and I don't discuss a lot in these videos. Is there anything on the 240 minute chart that we see differently than we saw on previous charts? And I would say yes. I would say I'm going to look at the market like this. We gapped higher and that created a move higher or a flag, the beginning of a flag pattern. So here is the flag portion. The pole is the move higher and the flag is the consolidation back and forth or as far as this chart's concerned, the chop shop. Now, it's debatable where you want to draw the top of the flag. That's not the point. It's conceptually, that's the point. So when we come back down, 
This essentially is a breakout area in this zone. But wait, there's more. What about this candle from September 11th, the 1330 candle? The candle closing at 1330 is a breakup candle breaking out of this flag pattern. Okay, fair enough. What's the low of that candle? 297.75, somewhere in the vicinity of 298. Okay, fair enough. We've been looking at 297, 297 and a half, 298. We're getting warmer. We're getting in the ballpark. Today's low happened to be 298.24. We didn't quite get to the low of the low of that candle. However, we did see the market reverse. So we can see reversals on shorter term charts and we can use the longer term charts for where the real heavy duty support or resistance areas should and will be. All that put together is generally going to work using the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, maybe it's 85, sometimes it's 75. Generally speaking, it works the majority of the time. Back to the daily chart, same candle from September 11th. The low is 297.75. We didn't quite get there today, but that seemed to have contained the market. So what are we going to do from here? Therefore, today's low becomes the bogey. That's what we're going to do from here. That's the only thing we can do from here. Intraday, we'll have different numbers for Inside the Numbers members. But for here, for these videos at night, the only thing we can do is use today's low as the bogey on the downside. Below today's low, beginning to close hourly below today's low, and something's cooking on the downside. Barring that, back to the 240 minute chart for a moment, barring that, how about this? What if I wet your whistle with this kind of a flag pattern? This is valid, this can go higher, we have to be aware if they begin trading hourly and then close daily above the former highs, they're going to have another leg higher. You're going to see panic buying. I'm the umpire. I'm calling balls and strikes. Everybody needs to be aware of what I'm seeing. This is the way I look at the market. I'm conveying the information. You took the risk of being inside my head. This is where it led you. Today's low, the bogey on the downside. The way I view the market, it's setting up for another leg higher. It's a tough range. It's a 30 point or 30 handle S&P range, $3 SPY range, give or take. That's not an easy risk reward scenario. How about a tail candle, the 120 minute chart? Come up short of the 50 period moving average. You're in an uptrend as long as you're above the 50 period moving average, quote unquote. That's not written in stone anywhere. That's just kind of a rule of thumb. Could be an old wives tale. Doesn't really matter. The point is you came up short and traded away from it in the northern direction. That's not bearish. That's bullish. Could we gap down tomorrow morning and go below today's low? Of course we could. I'm telling you what's on the chart now. What's the story over in Camp IWM? Is it the same story or do we have a slightly different story? We actually have a slightly different story. So let's go to story time and see what we've got. In my book, we have a market that's in a totally different position than we just discussed. We have a market that seems to have topped, seems to be headed lower, at least to test the downsloping trend line that we busted up above. Now, in the interest of time, we're not going to run through the litany of charts that I'm looking at on another screen. And when I look at those charts, it doesn't look anything like the SPY. So we have to take this into account. It's a puzzle piece. It's on the table. Could it be a semi or pseudo bull flag pattern in development setting up for another move higher? It could be. And certainly the market can move higher anyway. I'm just saying everything I'm looking at says it doesn't really look like a bottom was formed. I can make an argument on a couple of charts that look similar to the SPY on the intraday charts, maybe 120 minute, maybe 240, but they don't really look the same, not convincing enough for me. I think it needs more time on the downside in the IWM. That's an opinion. That's not technical analysis. That's the last thing I just said. I think it needs more time. 
That's an opinion. It's not my opinion when I say time is more important than price. I believe that to be a true fact. But in the case of the IWM, I'm not convinced one way or the other, so therefore, my hands would be in my pocket with the IWM. How about the VIX? Is the VIX telling us anything? We did see some back and forth. We saw some chop shop with the VIX today, but that's expected considering Kabuki Theater. Bullish or bearish close? Technically, bearish close. If you had to pick one, it's a bearish close. I'm looking again at other charts on another screen and it doesn't look bullish, it looks bearish, and it doesn't look finished yet. What's the number that we were interested in for the VIX? Wasn't it below 13, 1250, 1275, something in that neighborhood? Let me refresh your memory. Yes, it was. I will be a collector of the VIX should it get down to that neighborhood. What do we find down at the transportation department? We find the transports were down 1.2% today, 129 points. They were down a whole lot more earlier. Most of that is attributed to FedEx. FedEx drags other stuff with it. You know how that works. You throw the baby out with the bathwater and you have a transportation average that's getting thrown out behind the woodshed. Nevertheless, we're not going to ignore the fact that the transports were down today. It's meaningful in the overall puzzle to the bigger picture. However, that candle on the daily chart is not a bearish candle per se. What that is, is a candle that tested a breakup candle low, reversed, and finished near the highs. That's a bullish sign, not a bearish sign. Again, calling balls and strikes, it's what you signed up for. How about the Qs? The Qs look like the SPX cash index. Big tail candle, finished near the highs. That's not bearish, that's bullish. Don't kick dirt on the umpire. How about the XLF, the financials? Anything bearish on this chart? Frankly, it's just in an uptrend. The market put in that doji candle the other day, last week, and here we are, right back near the high of that same candle. Is that a top signal? Is it a fake out, meaning trick trap, fool and frustrate? Or are they going higher? We have to take everything else we just talked about, put it on the table, they're all puzzle pieces, we come out with a picture. That's what the XLF chart is telling me, it's not bearish unless it's Trick Trap Fool and Frustrate, also known as Trick and Company. The SMH, the proxy for the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index, similar routine. We're above all the moving averages, so while there is a distance between current price and home base, which is enough to scare the market a little bit, we have to look at the reality and say, this is in an uptrend and can certainly trade higher. And with that, folks, I am officially out of win tonight, so I am going to pull the ripcord. I must say, I do appreciate you. Without you, these videos are not possible, so I thank you very much. I'm David Frost. This is my strategic forecast. And I thank you for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.